Hi there guys, welcome to another episode. Now this week's video, it wasn't really planned as such, but I do get a lot of questions from a lot of people asking me one thing on the Fiesta, and especially the ZTEC conversion that I've done. And the question is, what alternator am I using? How have I fitted it? And what bracket am I using? There is my alternator. It's an incredibly tight fit in there. Um, now I'm perfectly happy with my alternator as it is at the moment, apart from one thing. So I thought, seeing as so many people have asked me what to do, I may as well make a new bracket because as you're looking at my belt down there, you can see that it's slightly twisted. I hope you can see it. It's very, very slightly twisted, meaning that the alternator is a bit like that, basically. So I'm gonna get this alternator out of there and take the bracket off and I'll show you the bracket that I've made and then we'll make a new one. So there it is, squashed up inside of there. As I said, it is incredibly tight to get it in there. There is not a lot of space left over anywhere. Uh, now I've already disconnected the battery, so I need to disconnect this cable here for the battery and the multi-plug, and then I'll be able to disconnect the rest of the alternator from the engine, and I'll show you the bracket that I've made. Right, so this is the alternator. This is the bracket that I made, and these are the bolts needed to fit the alternator and the bracket to the car. So the first question I get a lot of is, what alternator am I using? And the, this alternator is a generic alternator. It's come from a, it's come from a shop here in Sweden that sells a lot of universal parts, generic parts. But I have looked this up, and this is exactly the same as an alternator for a 1982. Toyota Corolla. Basically, it's got the three pins on the back here with a plug, and it's got the battery plus there. And it is tiny. As you can see, it fits in my hand. It is absolutely tiny. It's still got a 55 amp output on it, so it's pretty powerful for its size. Bearing in mind, you know, it fits in the palm of my hand. This one that I bought when it came didn't have this pulley on it. This has obviously got a ribbed pulley on here to cope with the belt that goes on the engine of the ZTEC. So one of these pulleys you do need to get and you do need to change it over. I do believe that these look very, very similar to the Denso models that you can buy. Uh, but this one does fit, it has one 10 millimeter hole there that goes all the way through the alternator. And it's got one at the bottom there, which is an M8 and it's threaded. So it's only got two points to mount it to. But yeah, a really tiny, handy, little alternator. So the space that the alternator fits into is there, which is not a lot. So there are the four bolts here already, and I think they're for the AC pump on the original Mondeo. So I'm gonna use those bolts again and hang the alternator down in this space here. But like I say, it is not a lot of space. So one thing you'll notice about this bracket is that it has zero adjustment in it. All the bolt points, so there and there, are fixed points. There's no adjustment on this bracket whatsoever. It literally holds the alternator in place and that's it, it doesn't do anything else. All the adjustment is done. So all the adjustment is done on this with the water pump idler kit, which is available from DA Performance Engineering. I will put a link to their page uh, underneath in the description so you can get the bracket for it and I'll show you the kit in a, in a few minutes. Um, so this is basically the bracket, and I've had to make this bracket, but I'm going to show you now how I made this bracket by making another one. Now I'm using, as I said earlier, the DA Performance Engineering water pump bracket, and it bolts on here to the side of the water pump. Uh, there's one bolt here behind the pulley, so it's a bit of a pain to get to, you have to take the pulley off. So there's one bolt there. There's another one here, now I've spaced mine out with a couple of nuts here, uh, but normally it fits in the aluminium cover that goes in there, but I don't have the aluminium cover yet. So I've just spaced it out there with a couple of nuts, and then there's the pulley there that fits on there. So this is the basic kit you use, to, and you basically tighten that wheel up by pulling it up, and that tightens the belt up. So that's what I use to tension it, because obviously there is no other adjustment. This is the only adjustment that there is on the, on the belt. 
So this is the piece of the metal that I'm going to use. It is 100 millimeters tall and it is four millimeters thick. Now, as you can see from this, uh, this is made up of two pieces. So there's one piece there and there's one piece there. And the reason for that is that this bracket here is 110 millimeters long. So I'm going to mark this up, one at 110 millimeters and then one at 70 millimeters. Right, so that's the pieces cut and you can see pretty much exactly how this is going to be put together. So what I need to do now is transfer that hole pattern onto this piece of metal. So instead of trying to measure the holes and work out where they are, I've used three strips of masking tape and a dirty finger. So I just rub my dirty finger against each of the holes. like that and it gives me the perfect impression of where these holes are. And I'm going to do slightly bigger because I know that that's where the the actual frame coming out of the engine sits and as well it just gives me a guide as to how far I can fit the brackets. So that's my holes marked out. Then I can unpeel the masking tape and apply it to the piece of metal. Now I use this edge here along the sump. So that bit of masking tape was level with this edge there. So I've lined that up with the bottom of there which is a straight edge and then I can mark out now the center of each one of those holes. So a quick test fit on the car reveals that that bolt will go in that bolt will go in, but none of the others. And the reason for that is, is because the water pump is touching slightly, very, very slightly on that corner. So what I'm gonna do is cut that corner off with the angle grinder and then round it off. While I'm at it, I'm gonna round that corner off and I'm gonna round that corner off, but not that corner. And the reason for that is because this is gonna be welded to it. So I don't need to round that off. So there we go, that is the plate in place now. The rounded corner so that it fits for the water pump and all the other bolts fit nice and perfectly. So now we're gonna add this plate down here as well. Right, so I've just laid that against there and basically I'm gonna cut it down slightly. I don't actually have to cut it down and round it off, but I am doing just to make it look a little bit neater. There's nothing here that means that I have to actually round it off, it's just, basic for the aesthetics to make it look nicer. So that's the only reason I'm doing that. And then all I have to do is weld these two plates together. Now a tip here to weld these, obviously these are butt jointed together like this. So it means that there's almost no gap between these, me these metal. So what I could do is pull them apart slightly so that there's a little gap there so to get a good penetration with the welder. But it also means that I get a gap in there. So what I'm gonna do is still butt joint them together but I'm going to grind, I'm going to grind slightly on that side and I'm going to grind slightly on that side. Now ideally I'd want about 30 degrees on that side and 30 degrees on that side. And what I want to do is grind about 30 degrees on either side so that the total here is then 60 degrees. So there'll be 30 degrees there and 30 degrees there to give me the total of 60 degrees which is a nice welding ditch gives me plenty of penetration plenty of room to fill in with a welder with it only being four millimeters thick right so that's now ground and you can see the and you can see the v shape in there now the problem with doing a v weld like this is that as i put a lot of heat into here it's going to shrink when it cools down and it's going to cause this metal to lift like that so i'm going to probably have a warp in the metal. And the way to combat that, if this was thicker, 
is to make an X weld. So you basically do a V weld on the top and a V weld on the bottom as well. And you weld from both sides where you get even heat from the bottom and even heat from the top. Now bear in mind this metal is only four mil thick. To try and put an X weld or two V welds into this metal, it's, a, it's not a lot of metal to do it in. So I'm gonna use the V shape knowing that it's probably gonna lift and it's gonna lift this side because it's smaller. So it's gonna make this side lift slightly. Uh, but I'm not too worried if it does because once it's welded, I can then put it in the press and flatten it again or put it in a vise and straighten it out again. You can probably just put it on the floor and whack it with a hammer and it will straighten it back out again. Um, but it gives me the best chance to get the proper penetration in the weld and the best chance of these two pieces of relatively thin metal to stick together. So I've now welded all across there and we'll see what it turned out like. I put a couple of washers on there just to keep it level. And we can see that it did warp just a tiny fraction. And you can see it's probably, it's probably a mil or two. It's probably one or two millimeters. So it's nothing major at all that that actually did bend. And if it had gone any more, I could have just put it in the press and bent it across there or put it in the vise and bent it. But I'm not going to worry about one or two millimetres. So that's the basic shape of the bracket. So I'm now going to grind off this weld and we can start to make the pillars here that the alternator actually attaches to. So I've now cut the pieces that are going to go there and that are going to go there. These are, in this case, they're slightly thinner than what I had originally. I had some four mil at the time at the moment i've got some thinner stuff it's probably about three mil not a huge problem i've marked out the hole there and i've marked out the hole there now these are marked this is 85 millimeters long and that is at 65 mil this is 40 mil long and the top of here is 20 mil high now these measurements fit that alternator that i definitely know fit if you get an, your own alternator make sure that those holes are right before you make them don't go along with my measurements they fit my alternator make sure you measure your own first so i'm going to drill the holes here so i need a 10 mil hole drilled there and i need an 8 mil drill hole drilled in that one and then i can start to weld them into place on the new bracket so that's these two pieces now before i weld them in I'm going to cut these support pieces here. Now I've only got support pieces on the top one. I don't have it on the bottom one and that's because most of the weight is hanging off of this bracket and it's so tall. This one is really really short so it doesn't actually need the support. Um, now obviously one of these is shorter than the other one and that's because there's more room for this one. If I made that one longer then it would be very very difficult to get that bolt in. So this one is 50 mil by 50 mil and this one is 70 by 50. So I'm going to cut these two pieces out now and then I can start to tack all of these three pieces together plus that one and then we've only got this little spacer to make them weld in after that. Right, so that's all the brackets made up now. As you can see, I've put a slight chamfer on that plate there. Now that is slightly more of an angle than the last one that I made and that's because I'm not putting a chamfer on the thicker one just a thinner one because uh, it doesn't really need it I'm going to grind it flush anyway and on the back side there'll be a bead of weld anyway so I don't really need to have anything deeper than that uh, so that's tightened up now I'll be able to weld this bracket onto this plate and then that, wherever that is I'll be able to weld this pipe to the bracket later because it needs moving up very very slightly but it's hard to do as it's loose and the rear bracket is already in place as you can see there so i'll probably tack it in place just a couple of tacks one in each corner and the same with that one and then i'll offer all this up to the car and make sure that that belt sits properly on the pulley as it didn't do before and that's one of the things i want to adjust this time so as you can see again it is incredibly tight but it does fit uh, I have had to tweak it very, very slightly just to bring it round to get it level again. But that has brought it level and that is a lot better, even though it wasn't a lot before, but it's a lot straighter than what it was before. So now I can weld the extra brackets into there, 
and then I can get it in the sandblaster and paint it. Right, so there we have the finished bracket. All I've done now is cleaned up these welds here just to give a nice straight face on there and I've also ground off that edge there to make it nice and smooth. Other than that, it's pretty straight out of the welder um, and that's it really. All I'm going to do now is put this in the sandblaster, blast it and obviously it's going to get a coat of powder coat on it. And one other thing I did think about before I do any more is the belt. Obviously I'm using one of these ribbed belts they're called a 6PK. Now the one I'm using is 1070. Uh, now when I did test it just now, I found it was a little bit tight. So 1075, 1080, which is probably around about where I need to be, really. This is a little bit tight now, but that's mainly because just with this new bracket, the holes aren't exactly where they were before. So this is a little bit tight at 1070. So there we are. Fresh out of the powder coating oven. Looks absolutely amazing. So I'm now gonna bolt this back to the engine and then we can bolt the alternator to the bracket. And talking of alternators, this is something I made for work. It's an old alternator from a Mercedes, I think. We've cut it open here and here so you can see the internal workings of an alternator. So I've sandblasted it and we've powder coated it and that silver metallic it's absolutely gorgeous. That is going to look amazing when it's put back together. That looks amazing. I might have to take my alternator apart. No, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Probably. Probably not going to do it. Probably. Right, so we're back where we started with now. It's all put back together again. Looking really rather neat and tight again in there. So... I have bought a slightly bigger belt now, so I'm using a 1078 rather than a 1070 that I had to start with. Just makes it fit nice and neatly there. But that's it. That's how I have fitted the alternator to a Mark 1 ZTEC converted Fiesta. So that's it for this episode. If there's anything else that you're wondering about how I've done or what I've done with the ZTEC conversion in a Mark 1 Fiesta, please drop me a comment below and I'll try and do what I can to answer. And if there's anything you want to see on a video, then let me know and I can film it for you. I'll put up some links to my social media on the screen now. You can always drop me an email. I'll put that in the description below. So that's it for now. I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.